Imagine waking up before the alarm goes off. Your heart is racing with anticipation and your mind swirling with ideas you can't wait to bring to life. Now picture a world where every step you take, every decision that you make, every habit and ritual that you embark in and every challenge you face isn't just about reaching the goal. It's about making a difference. This isn't a fantasy for countless athlete, entrepreneurs, and tech-savvy individuals who are looking to maximize their human performance and potential because this is a reality. Welcome to today's Can't Believe I Made It podcast inside of our part five series of how to utilize artificial intelligence, not only to increase your human performance, but other ways to optimize getting better 1% each and every day. Over the past couple weeks, this is week five for us, we've actually dove into the opportunity of what it might look like for you to engage artificial intelligence. If the listenership has taught me anything about this series is that one, some of you might be brand new to this. So if you are that type of individual pod family, I want to encourage you to go ahead and pause this episode and actually take the time to apply some of the knowledge that we've learned over the past four episodes. If you're coming into this brand new, I would encourage you to go back to part one to see how AI can optimize your nutrition, your sleep, your fitness, your mindset. And now with today, what I think I'm really, really excited to do is teaching you how to bring that really great idea that you have into the deliverables needed for you to mold what it might look like to take action on it. Once again, and I will tell you this very, very frankly, very honestly, Information is readily available. We already have this at our fingertips. And now with the use of artificial intelligence, it's even more at our fingertips. But the one thing that most people miss is the application, is taking action on some of the things and the deliverables that you're creating for yourself. This is where that human touch, this is where a coach like myself, this is where possibly a community can help you to apply the knowledge that you're taking on a day-to-day -day basis. So all of this, and I don't want this to, to really die in vain, if you will, I would encourage you to set up the systems to take the time to have these conversations with AI so that you can optimize your own human performance. Because if you're not able to apply any of the things, I mean, we're episode, I want to say 146 or 147. My team always reminds me that I always forget which episode we're on as I type the notes and give them everything that they need in order to post uh, and send our message out to the masses. So I always forget about that. So if I'm completely wrong, my bad. <laughs> but if you're almost 150 episodes into this, you've probably learned that my big push for you is, hey, I'm here as a support system. I'm here to make for you to make fun of me. I'm here to make fun of you at times, but to also give you a really insightful look and not only into the hero's journey of high level individuals that we've had inside of our guest podcast, but also giving you the tactics and small little pieces. But my push for you is to take those pieces and to apply. Now, I wanted to start today's podcast with describing the differences between your passion and your purpose, because we all have that. And as we embark on a journey of getting that 1% better, there's likely some passion and some purpose behind that. You've already heard that in past episodes with Matthew Torres, our Cappy entrepreneur, with Dosh Collins, who really wanted to give back to the indigenous community. Those are really beautiful examples of passion and purpose. For Matthew, he discussed really wanting to navigate his health journey in a different way for that next generation that he's bringing in, and also for the coffee or the decaf enthusiasts that he's been pouring into from a community standpoint. You see, for a lot of us, people are watching. Community, member, community members are watching. Our families are watching. People look up to us whether or not you want to admit it or not. And if you're someone who's kind of taking a step back, that's like, no one really looks up to me, I'm going to go ahead and call bullshit real quick and ask you to press pause. And I need you to check your negative self-talk because each and every one of us need to recognize that there are always eyes watching. And so when I really push you to get that 1% better, I'm pushing you to, to navigate this in a way where you know that your role is extremely important. Because when we look at passion and purpose as it pertains to this big idea that you have that you might want to create maybe a side gig or a main gig, or maybe just doing what we did with this podcast where it's like, you know what, I'm, I'm done receiving the information, my gift to myself, and that was my gift for this podcast, right? For those of you who, who have no idea what I'm talking about or those of you who have heard this story, you know 
that I overthought this podcast for about three years. And finally, I'm about to be 38 this year in December. On my 35th birthday, I was like, you know what? I'm, I'm done talking about this. I'm going to just go take action on it. And now we're almost 150 episodes later. So in order for us to understand how to take that, that, that really big idea or that, that really big passion project of ours, we also need to understand the differences between your passion and your purpose. Your passion is that, is that thing that gets you up, and it's going to fuel the desire to continue to etch away at it. Your purpose, on the other hand, is going to be your guiding compass. Why do you do what you love to do? It might be for yourself. It might be to honor others. It might be to honor your environment. It's entirely up to you when it comes to this. So, so in order for us to take that big idea into what it might look like from the standpoint of habits and rituals and systems, I wanted to take you through probably one of my favorite prompts that I've been personally using inside of the use of ChatGPT so that not only I can increase the ideas, which is also going to increase my human performance, but also actionable steps that I can take. Now, before we get really clear on any sort of idea that we're trying to formulate in our mind, it's really clear that we, need to, we also need to get clear about who we want to serve and what purpose it brings from there. So I'm going to give you a little bit of a behind the scenes of what I've been doing inside of season eight, just so that you can see and just so that you can formulate this as well. I will say that this is probably my favorite prompt because of what it offers from the standpoint of opportunity. Okay, because we need to know who we want to serve, right? We need to know how we are going to solve their biggest problem. And before we can solve their biggest problem of that ideal product that you want to launch or that ideal client or that ideal consumer, we need to understand what their biggest problems are. Because my friends, if I've learned anything over the past 10 years of this entrepreneurship journey, what I also know is that if I can solve people's problems, and then if I can hold space for the humanity, a lot of really beautiful things can happen. And this podcast is really just one arm of some of the things that I am just so incredibly grateful for. And as you as a pod family, again, I've said this to you before. Thank you so much for allowing me to do what I do. Thank you for allowing me to talk at you. <laughs> I really do enjoy it. Sometimes I might think to myself and start comparing myself to others but I think it's a really great reminder when I get questions, and that was our last episode, right? It was a Q&A section of questions that I've been getting from a lot of you. But not only do I love the questions, I love the engagement, but I also love the random text messages and the random messages are like, yo, everything that you said there was super dope. Thank you for that. And so I want to encourage you all to, to continue that and also to pay it forward. If you see someone who's out there doing something really special, Take the time to reach out because you have no idea what they're going through. And I can tell you very vulnerably that during those times when you've reached out, I absolutely needed it. All right, so let's go ahead and dive into today's prompt. This is going to be the last of our series. Again, our listenership has changed, which it's kind of causing me to start the, the wheels turning where some of you just haven't had the chance of diving into the use of ChatGPT. Again, there's a multitude of different tools. We've already talked about that in the last four episodes, but it's leading me to believe that one, the information, uh, it just hasn't been attainable yet. Two, these actually might be things that you're not caring about right now, which I think to a larger degree is, is absolutely okay. But friends, if I'm telling you that different sports organizations globally, different organizations, very powerful organizations are utilizing AI to increase their performance output. Why aren't we, why aren't we looking at this from our human performance? Why aren't we looking at this as an opportunity, as that 1% that lift, if you will? So I want to encourage you to be thinking about it from that standpoint. All right, so let's get into the prompt for today. It's something that I'm really, really excited about and one that I've personally been using that I really, really like. Okay, so today's prompt, and I'll put this in the show notes just so that you have it, is going to be discover the 10 questions about, and, we're, and here we're going to insert what the main pain points are for that ideal consumer or that ideal client. So if we go back to other examples of some of our Hero's Journey guests, let's look at Matthew Torres for an example. So if he wanted to input this and utilize this as an idea tool, 
he might discover the top 10 questions that decaf coffee lovers really enjoy, right? Or he might ask the top 10 questions of what it might mean to get a decaf coffee business off the ground, okay? And if we're looking at Thosh Collins, he might look at the top 10 questions for, for health, longevity, and environment, right? Because what we're doing inside of these prompts is not only are you able to take some of the information and put it in there and be very detailed in the process, but we're actually getting some insight into your ideal client or your ideal consumer. And because I'm speaking to the creatives in the room, I want you to be thinking about this and get your wheels turning a little bit. So I'm going to utilize this podcast, right? I'm, I'm talking to you all as my as my collection, as my tribe, if you will. And so it's going to say, discover the top 10 questions about health, performance, and longevity. That, and this is going to be the ideal client, right? That high-level athlete entrepreneurs need answered. So when I post this in the show notes, I'm going to actually take out some of those pieces so that you can input for yourselves. But let's go ahead and see what comes up. All right, so as the questions roll out, the first question is going to be, how can I effectively balance rigorous training with the mental demands of running a business without compromising my health or performance in either? We talked about this a couple episodes ago. There's a duality that each and, each and every one of us hold. We all wear different hats. And the hat that I'm wearing, shout out to the WNBA, game four last night was absolutely phenomenal. If you did not have a chance to take that, there's my ADHD d brain at work live <laughs> but again we talk about the duality of all the hats that we wear each and every one of us have a role inside of our families we have a role inside of our work we have a role inside of our ideas or that business or that creative passion that we have we have roles in our friend groups and our extended family there's a bunch of hats that we wear and so the main question here is how can i effectively perform in some of these different areas and it all points back to how do you optimize opportunities to fill your cup? We know this through our four pillars, right? How you sleep, how you move, how you eat, and how you think. Those are our four pillars. And so as I'm talking to you all, we're making sure that we're maximizing those opportunities and in the same breath, also maximizing your, mind, your mindset around these hero journeys episodes as well as giving you the tactics to go out and to go do that next best thing for yourself, even though it might scare the shit out of you. So as we go into question number two, what dietary regimen optimizes physical performance for competition while also supporting sustained mental clarity and energy for business activities? Again, we point it back to nutrition. Nutrition is one of our pillars. How we eat is going to maximize how we not only feel about our endeavor, but also how we step into the endeavor. For any of us who have underfueled and hit a workout or tried to hit a deadline, you probably know that your output was, was probably pretty shitty. <laughs> let's, let's be honest. Let's just call it what it is, right? Question number three, what are the best recovery practices that work double duty for physical exertion and cognitive exhaustion? Right? So once again, we're looking at the role of recovery. The way that I would answer these questions is, hey, how's the person sleeping? How's the person eating? How are they preparing for this, this thing that is going to be mentally and physically exhausting? Question number four, how can I optimize sleep for both physical recovery and cognitive function considering my dual career? How can I sleep better? How can I maximize my habits and my rituals knowing that I also am competing in this one thing and also competing from the standpoint of my cognitive ability to take action on some of the things that I absolutely enjoy. The fifth one that I think is gonna be really important too is what types of cross training not only enhance athletic performance but also contribute to mental acuity and stress reduction. In essence, how can I step into that next endeavor and cross train away and train my body and train my mind in a way where I can increase my athletic and my cognitive performance? All things that we've talked about over the past almost 150 episodes, right? And I think this piece is important because what you can do from this output of the prompt is you can dive into the idea a little bit more. If you want to tap into one of these, you can simply just ask AI, hey, can you tap into one a little bit more and talk to me as if I'm a high schooler? Explain to me why this is important. Explain to me how this could come to life. 
you see, there's there's a multitude of things that we can do here that I think is so important. And if you're thinking about that next step, you're already someone who has this idea kind of carved out, but you want to understand how to solve people's problems. That's where you can tap into, okay, well, how do I create content? Hey, Chad GBT, taking these 10 questions, can you create me 30 days of Instagram threads that I can post on my platforms? Hey, Chad GBT, from here, can you create me a seven day email series so that I can optimize, so I can send this out to some of my email subscri subscribers? If you're looking to increase your lead magnets, hey, Chat GBT, can you take these 10 questions and create me an outline for a webinar that I'm going to be running for this target client? Again, there's so much that we can do here. And I think what is really important to share to you all, just being incredibly honest, is that over the past five weeks, we've been diving in how to increase your human performance through artificial intelligence. I've said this time and time again, this is going to continue to grow. It's going to become the new norm. And if I'm encouraging, encouraging, uh, encouraging you to go do that next best thing for yourself, to get that 1% better, I deeply believe in the power of what artificial intelligence is going to be offering us. Sure, it can help us with our production, it can help us with ideas, but the application piece is going to be incredibly important. Now, if you don't have a level of accountability, if you don't have a community, that's exactly why we run a lot of the programs that we do. And if you're someone who's not quite ready for coaching, I would encourage you to go back to part two of this when we went into the mindset and how to tackle what well, was really part two and three and how to tackle the mindset and how to tackle some of those limiting beliefs that you have. Because once again, this is something that's going to continue to grow and it'll become the new norm. And I don't want you to be late to creating opportunities for you to get that 1% better. All right. So. That was our uh, end of our part five of the series. Um, I was thinking about this more and more, and I think if I'm just being incredibly honest with myself, uh, this next episode, we are actually going to do our all-star celebration of season eight, Embracing the Pivot. I honestly wanted to go down the line a little bit more and kind of run it into the new year, but I'm going to go ahead and take a much-needed two-month break to not only re-energize but also to have conversations with you all to take a look at the analytics from season eight to see the types of things that you really love. And the one thing that I am noticing is that while a lot of you might love these 15, more or less 15 to 20 minute episodes of the rituals for resilience style episodes, you really love the guests. You really love the hero's journey aspects and you really love these all-star episodes. So a little bit of a teaser. I'm also going to take the two months to dive into all of our guests and to see if we can start doing some more mashups, some more storytelling, some more reminders that you are great, you are worthy, and you can do hard things. I will catch you on the next episode, my friends. We'll celebrate season eight, and then we'll go from there. Later.